Are you a researcher or a PhD student who would like to publish papers in top journals in the field, but you get stuck when trying to express your research ideas precisely, concisely, using appropriate academic language? You know, you try to use different tools such as ChatGPT, maybe different dictionaries in order to find the exact right phrase to express your research ideas appropriately, which obviously, you know, means that you're wasting a lot of time and it's a lot of effort. Then in this video, I want to show you a very easy, simple tool that is completely free and no one actually is talking about that will help you to do exactly that. It will help you to avoid getting stuck with academic language. It will help you to choose the right phrase when you're writing papers. So let's dive in and let me show you how to do this. If you're new here, my name is Marek Kiczkowek and I run Academic English Now, where we help PhD students and researchers write and publish research papers in top journals in the field. And if you're enjoying this video and you want to see more videos like this, then hit the like, hit the subscribe button so you don't miss future videos. Now, there's been so much hype about ChatGPT, so much hype about other AI tools for writing papers that I think sometimes we get lost in pursuing this new shiny object and we actually ignore tools that are that are simpler they work better and they do their job faster because remember chat gpt hasn't been actually designed to help you to use more appropriate academic concise scientific language you know it has been designed for generic tasks it's a more generic language model therefore what it gives you doesn't necessarily always apply to writing papers and there are much better tools uh, than that that allow you to choose for example the right phrase so that you don't get stuck you avoid making mistakes and ultimately you can express your research ideas more precisely more concisely and correctly so in this video i want to show you precisely one such tool that i think nobody right now is talking about and i've been using this tool myself to write my own research papers and also recommending it to my clients at academic english now so let's dive right in and let me show you how it works so this video is going to be all about the language and how you can improve your scientific writing your academic english and check whether the expressions that you're using are accurate and this will also help you to avoid getting stuck if you're for example frequently staring at a blank piece of paper or you've got a phrase but you're not sure which words to select in order to express your ideas appropriately you know this is this is a big problem a lot of phd students and researchers face so in this video i'm going to show you how to use a website called osdic osdic.com in order to be able to check which words to use in what situations and how to do it ac accurately when you're writing a PhD thesis or maybe if you're writing a research paper. First of all, what can you do with Ostic? Ostic is basically, you know, it's, it's not really a dictionary that provides you meanings of words, but it provides you with collocations, right? Collocations are basically word combinations. What do I mean by that? You know, words in, in any language, they kind of like hanging out together, you know? And some words have best buddies like humans do, you know? You also have your best friends that you like to hang out with all the time. And then, you know, you have people that you know that maybe you don't see that frequently, but every now and again you might meet. And then there are people you don't know at all, or you just want to avoid at all costs. It's exactly the same with words in English and in any other language, that there are some words that are just best buddies and they love being together all the time. And then there are some words which sometimes hang out together, but not that frequently. And then there are words combinations of words which never hang out together they just basically hate the guts of each other right they, they just like they will never ever drink coffee together at all right and what we want to do when we you know when we write in scientific text is we want to use those best buddies we want to use words together that frequently hang out together especially when it comes to writing scientific texts. That's basically how OSDIC works. It's a dictionary of collocations of word combinations, right? So how can you use it in practice? Well, let's say, you know, you want to use the word contribution, right? Like a contribution to research, right? And, you know, you want to talk about a big contribution or a good contribution that your research has made, but you kind of know that, well, talking about using the word big or good 
you know, isn't really academic, but you're not sure which words you could use with contribution. Or you may be wondering, is it contribution to, contribution of, what, what is the preposition after the word contribution? Well, if you put the word contribution into Ozdek, this is what you're going to get, right? You, first of all, you're going to get adjectives that are frequently used with this word. So for example, important, significant contribution, notable, outstanding, and so on. You're going to get the verb, right? So verb plus contribution, meaning make. So you can make a major contribution, let's say, right? Or you can make an important contribution. And then you're going to get the preposition as well, right? That it's to, it's not of, it's not at or anything else, it's to, right? So this is, this is really helpful in that sense. Now, when you're using it, you've got to be careful because not all the words given here will be academic. For example, you know, big, enormous, uh, huge. These words are either informal or everyday. You don't want to use them in academic language. But a lot of these will be used in academic content, right? But just a word of caution. Now, you also have to be careful if you put in a word like contribution that has more than one meaning, right? That you choose the correct meaning, right? So in here, we're talking about something that helps or causes increase to something, right? On the other hand, there is another meaning of contribution that is money given to help, right? So that's that's not the contribution in here that we're talking about. We're talking about a scientific contribution, okay? So that's one way you can use it. Let me give you another example. You, you want to talk about something, you know, a concept, let's say, that is used frequently, for example, in your field, right? But you don't really know how to phrase it correctly using the verb used, right? So if you put used here, it comes up as a as a verb in here, right? So you can you can see that, you know, for example, something is commonly, extensively, frequently used, right? Or it's rarely um, used, okay? So this is incredibly useful if you're stuck and you don't know wh what are the right words to, to select, to use with, with another word, and it can really help you as well to be more accurate, right? Because maybe you wanted to say, uh, for example, instead of being commonly used, you maybe you wanted to say, you know, I don't know, you used another word, like naturally used or something like this, right? So if you, if you use Ostig in, in just a couple of seconds, you can check if your intuition about the collocation, right, about the word combination is correct. And therefore you can avoid a lot of common mistakes that you might be making when it comes to academic writing. Now, if you've enjoyed this video and you want to get personalized help writing about a thesis or publishing research papers from me and my team, then definitely book a free one-to-one -one consultation. The link is right below this video. We'll go over your main challenges, pinpoint your goals, and outline a personalized action plan for you that will help you to achieve those goals.